I'm very fortunate to say that I have the most talented audience on YouTube, and the last time that we took a vote on my Facebook page, my viewers decided that they want me to do a tutorial on how to draw Kate Beckinsale. And I listened. So this video will give you step-by-step -step instruction on how to draw actress Kate Beckinsale. Even if you're new to drawing, I guarantee that you will surprise yourself if you follow my steps. So grab your pencil and some drawing paper. If you have your doubts or you need some motivation, hit the button that says playlist. Millions of people have viewed my videos and thousands have completed them successfully. I have over 10 years of teaching experience and I'm someone who didn't start drawing until I was 20 years old. So I have a different perspective on how to train aspiring artists. Let's begin. Step 1. Draw the box that you see. Notice that there are three rectangles inside the box. The reason that there are three rectangles is because a face can often be divided into three equal segments. Hairline to brow line, brow line to bottom of nose, bottom of nose to chin. This formula works perfectly on Kate Beckinsale. Step 2. Make the U shape that you see for the chin. Step 3. Make the two shapes for the eye region. Notice that her head is slightly turned, so these shapes are shifted slightly towards your left. Step 4. Make the line at the bottom of the nose. Notice that the septum is lower than the two nostrils. Also, be sure to notice the amount of separation from the eye shapes. Step 5. Add eyebrows at the top of the eye shapes. Step 6. Look at the image of Kate Beckinsale. Notice that there is a perfect square in between the pupils of the eye and the corners of the mouth. Add the four dots that you see. Take some extra time for this step. It is very important for the likeness. Step 7. Kate is looking down in this image, so her eyes should be banana shaped. Use the dots to guide your placement of the banana shapes. Did I just say that? Step 8. Add the eyelids above the banana shapes and the lines below. Step 9. Add the hair shape. Notice how this shape intersects the top rectangle. The height of the hair is more than a third of the face because her head is tilted downwards. Step 10. Add the top lip. Just connect the dots. The top of the upper lip is like a flattened M shape. Step 11. I'm clearly bananas for Kate because her bottom lip is banana shaped. The area in between? You guessed it. Bananas. Step 12. Now add some teeth. Here is a close-up. If you need help drawing teeth, check out this tutorial or make her a vampire. Step 13. Kate needs ears. Don't sweat it, just don't make her Dumbo. Step 14 is optional. Add her earrings. If you expect to draw this perfectly, curb your enthusiasm. All you need to do is add some squiggly lines and connect them. Add a banana if it floats your boat. Step 15. Add a neck. Step 16. Erase all of the guidelines. In other words, erase what is left from the rectangles. Next, take notice of the link that I just added. After this step, we will do shading. Just click this link if you feel that you are messing up. The video that I linked to will teach you an easy way to restart from this point. Step 17. We will start our shading with the eye region. If you have never crosshatched before, you might want to view the video that I just added in the upper right corner. It is my shading tutorial. When we are done shading, you will see very little white in the eye. Kate is wearing mascara and her lashes are dark and pointed outwards, away from the nose, and downwards. 
the outer corner of each eye is darkened, but the upper eyelid remains in highlight, so keep it lighter in tone. Shape the cheeks with cross-hatching and notice how much lighter this area of the face is compared to the eye region. It is a huge difference. The bridge of the nose is shaded much more at the top than in the middle. The bottom of the nose is shaded slightly more than the lower cheek region, but not as dark as the eye region. The eyebrows, eyelashes, and nostrils are the darkest tones. Pause the video now to draw, or click the button to repeat this step. Step 18. Now we will shade the forehead region. The brightest part of the forehead is equal in tone to the nose. This highlight is right at the top, just below the hairline. The majority of the forehead is a tone that's similar to the highlight area of the cheeks. Notice that the hairline is not a hard line. It is a soft, gradual transition to a darker area. I recommend that you use a soft bristle paintbrush later on in this drawing for where the hair meets the forehead. Finally, notice that the side on your right is darker than the side on your left. Hit the repeat button to restart this step. Step 19. The bottom of the face is tricky, so take your time. Notice that the side on your right is in shadow. This is a very complex shadow that continues down from the cheek region and curves below the bottom lip and the chin. The corners of the mouth are as dark as the eyes, and the bottom row of teeth are more hidden than the top row. In general, the mouth is one of the darker regions of the face. Be sure to notice that the lips are very different in tone. There is a strong highlight on the bottom lip, and overall there is more differentiation in tone. Step 20. The trick to drawing hair is to develop it slowly and try to follow the movement of it with your pencil tip. Remember this. To eventually get the highlights, you will need to build the hair up to a neutral tone. Then you can use the eraser for highlights and add the darker areas by pressing harder on the pencil tip. Remember the trick is to build the tones up slowly. Also, remember that the hairline is a gradual transition in tone from skin to hair. If you are someone who struggles with drawing hair, I recommend that you watch this again. Hit the repeat button to restart this step. Step 21. Now it's time to do the earrings. Notice that I am erasing the dark outlines with my eraser, and I'm using the pencil to give it more depth. After I use the pencils, I then use a blending stump to smudge a neutral tone. Then I finish it up by adding darker tones or erasing with the eraser. This all sounds complicated, but it's really insignificant to the likeness. In other words, don't sweat it. Step 22. Shade the neck. Focus on your right side. Notice that it is darker than the jaw area above. The left side is more linear or line-like. Step 23. You are almost finished. First, let me say congratulations to you for your persistence and dedication. I did not start drawing and painting until I was 20 years old, and I knew that I had to stay with art because I couldn't stop drawing and painting. If you feel the same way, keep going. That means that you're an artist of some sort. Don't deprive yourself. The world needs people who can add beauty to life. A lot of the things that we went over in this video can be applied any time you draw, such as breaking an image down into shapes. But now, I want you to focus on the entire image of Kate Beckinsale. Forget mine and compare yours with the reference image. Specifically, compare the tones and the quality of the edges. The tones are the lights and darks that make up an image. I want you to ask yourself questions like, are the darkest areas of my drawing 
similarly shaded to the darkest parts of the reference image. Do the same with the highlights and all of the other tones. Please know that there is a limit to the darkness of a regular number two pencil. You can buy darker pencils online and I put my recommendations in the video description under supplies. Notice how I use the paintbrush to gradually spread the tones. I also carve out the highlights with the kneaded eraser. Notice how I repeat this process several times to finish my drawing. Now turn your attention to the edges. For instance, compare the soft edge of the bridge of the nose with the hard edge on the corner of Kate Beckinsale's mouth. Do that for other edges in this artwork. It might look right now that I'm repeating my process, but there is no single route to take when making a drawing. There's a lot of trial and error involved. I recommend that you watch me work and pause the video at the very end to finish your drawing. You are going to have to repeat what I'm doing in a way that makes sense to you. Think of yourself as a cook who can't read. In order to finish this drawing, I can't give you an exact recipe but I can show you my process and how many edits that I've made. There's a lot of logic and intuition that goes into drawing. You will have to use that as your recipe. If you've gotten this far, you're on the right track. Don't give up on this drawing. Use your observation skills and do your best to mimic the tones that you see. I hope that this helped you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to rate and comment. I try my best to answer all of my comments.